we have a, a, a motto at, at Grainville which is inspire, motivate and challenge. And that's for staff as well as students. And we're looking for opportunities where they exist in any field, whether it's the creative arts, the sports, or even in the world of IT and business. And it's the business that I want to talk about because we're educating young people for the world of adult life. And that brings with it all sorts of uh, worries and concerns. We need to develop young people so they're resilient uh, and can deal with knockbacks that life provides, uh, regretful as they are, but where they will exist. And we need to develop young people that have got the communication skills and the team building skills, as well as the leadership. But we want young people to actually be themselves, develop their true potential. So how do you do that in a curriculum? Well, you deliver a curriculum, all the experiences you'd expect, but you do much more. So you develop leadership, you develop teamwork. Our young people run their own businesses with real money from private sponsors, and they've done so for three years. Uh, they trade for eight to 12 weeks this year. They've traded for eight weeks. They're in teams of their own making, and there's no age limit on those students that want to take part. So today you're going to hear students aged 12 to 14 talking about their experience and their first step into the world of being an entrepreneur. They've taken a creative idea, they've made it their own, they've made a market, they've financed, they've developed, they've sold, they've used social media, they've used their skills, their interpersonal skills, their communication skills to make that business work. Now this is the third year that we've been involved in this project working with some key sponsors, Auger, Ernst & Young and Barclays. And that's part of the, stu the Jersey Student Business Challenge. The teams give back to the community. So in three years, the teams that have been involved have made a profit of £20,000 and £11,000 of that money has gone into local and international charities. And that's just two schools involved. The project is expanding to four schools next year. But more than that, at Grainville School, we are pioneering a new business and enterprise Key Stage 4 course that's accredited as a V-Cert in vocational business and enterprise. And here, these students will be working at Digital Jersey. They'll be producing an online business portfolio, and they will be working with the business community, marketing, finance specialists, web developers. And this is a course that's two years long. So we've taken a small project, and we've grown it and made it large. All the young people you'll hear from today, all the young people that have been involved have changed as a result of their experience and they are richer, stronger, more confident individuals who I'm sure will be the entrepreneurs in Jersey's future. Uh, I'd like to now call to the stage our younger students as part of the ACE of Teams. Thank you. Hello, we are ACE of Teams. I'm April and I'm 12 years old. I'm Carolina and I'm also 12 years old. Our first idea was to sell stationery. We had thought about buying it at the pound shop and selling for a profit, but then decided against the idea. We thought it would be a better idea to sell flapjacks, as it could be very easy to make. Our roles were getting the ingredients, baking, packaging, marketing the products, selling, working out finances, and posting things on social media. We each had our roles, and we had to make sure we did them so that our team can produce good products. We've learned how to sell and communicate with the public. You have to be very organised. It's extremely hard work and you have to work as a team. There was also the social media side of things. We had our Facebook page where we'd, put a, where we'd put a few photos of us. We had our Twitter page, but we hardly used it as we had our Facebook page. And we also had a website where people could order any flapjacks that they wanted and many of our um, orders were from there. Charities. Our charities are CAMS and Help a Jersey Child. We are giving 10% to each. We chose them because we like to help children around the island and we also believe that these are good causes which we find extremely important and worth helping. We had two different kind of profits. One of them was our gross profit. Our gross profit is how much money we would have made if we hadn't paid for all the trips and all the ingredients which is £610.21. Our net profit is how much we had made taking out the money we owed for pictures, getting ingredients, etc., which is £434.50. Thank you for listening. We are Perfectly Possum Treats from Grainville Year 9. 
We sold dog, cat and bird treats and iced gingerbread for humans. We joined the business challenge because we thought it would be an, a good opportunity, enjoyable and a chance to extract valuable business skills that will be useful later in life. Hi, my name is Bethia, I'm 13 years old, I'm the company secretary and I made the bird treats. Hi, my name is Charlotte. I'm 14 years old. I was the finance director and marketing director, and I also made the gingerbread for humans. Hi, I'm Caitlin Fitzsimmons. I'm 13 years old. I was the sales director, and I made the dog treats. Hi, I'm April. I'm 13, and I help make the bird treats, and I'm the operations director. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm 14 years old, and I'm the IT director. I also help make the gingerbread. Hi, I'm Lily, I'm 14, I'm the Managing Director, I supplied packaging and made the cat treats. During the beginning of the Business Challenge, we gathered ideas as to what we could do to make a business as, as successful as possible, thus creating our business plan. Before the initial selection, we, had, we knew we wanted to do something animal related and considered doing a dog walking service. Someone considered selling food as well, snacks. And after some confusion as to whether they meant for the pet or the owner, pet food was incorporated. We then dropped the dog walking and widened our range of customers by aiming for the most common household pets, dogs, cats and birds, and widened it further by selling gingerbread for people if they didn't have pets. As you know, we make homemade dog, cat and bird treats, plus iced gingerbread for humans. Most of the recipes we started off with were found either online or passed to us by parents. We made sure that the treats were healthy for the animals with everything in them and we made some tweaks, for instance, the shape of the dog treats. When selling the treats, we made sure that all of our buyers knew what were in the ingredients and, and the treats for the health benefits for the pets. For instance, the garlic in the dog treats helps boost the cardiovascular system. Thanks to the GSBC, we have almost sold every Saturday since the challenge started, though we were also able to sell in break and lunch times during school hours. On one occasion, we sold at the Grainville car boot sale, and we also had a chance to sell at Ransom's. Here is a list of all the dates we sold at during the business challenge. On hand to receive us these dates was Charlotte, who was ready to send emails requesting pictures at 8 in the morning. As a group, we have decided to give 50% of our profits to the Jersey-based animal shelter, the JSPCA. We think it's best that the money is staying on the island and not elsewhere, and also the charity tied in with our business plan. As most of our friends were on Facebook, and we find it the most popular site, we decided to make that our main social page, even though we also made Twitter, Instagram and Pinterest accounts. We made a post before and after we sold, or whenever we changed something that the public needed to know. On our Facebook page, we reached over 200 likes. Like all businesses, there were some problems that we faced. For example, forgetting things, individual time management, not being able to ascend, attend selling because of other commitments, and even the little but still important things like running out of bags. But even though we had disagreements, like all businesses do, in the end we managed to face our problems and sort it out for the business. I never want to make gingerbread again. <laughs> this was Charlotte's quote from the challenge. Over the past few months, we as a group have learned all about marketing, financing, working as a team, and even the right way to talk to customers. And as well as winning the challenge altogether, we, through the, social, through, the, through the use of social media, were not only able to export our products to England and Scotland, but to our amazing newly found friend in Greece too. The profit and loss sheet was formulated so everything was automatically worked out for us. We've also included how much we raised for JSPCA and our individual profit. We worked out the profit margins, as you can see, they're shown in blue. We've been fairly consistent efficiency-wise, with our least efficient week being week 5, and our most efficient week being week 8, week eight or our last week. This, of course, doesn't take into account labour costs, as a more permanent a commercial business would. We would like to send a huge thank you to everyone involved, the sponsoring companies, Barclays, Osher and Ernest Young, and everyone else involved, particularly our wonderful mentors, Peter Derrick from Osher, and our in-school mentor, Mrs. Williams, for providing this amazing opportunity. This, this experience has given us so many valuable skills we'll be able to use in the future. 
we have thought about the sustainability of our business and have come to the conclusion that due to the valuable skills we've gained, our business, should we wish to continue it, would be sustainable enough to be a long-term success.